Hello, hello. Here I am once again, here to talk to you about books. I think first of all, just a quick update on where the hell I've been, what the hell I've been doing, um, and also what books I've been reading. I won't lie, it's been a hot minute. But I think the last time we spoke, I was still reading Dr. Dracula, this baby right here. I finished it, finally. And you can see all of my annotations. It was so fun, actually. Look, you can see my comments I made here. If you're thinking about like whether or not you should do annotations, I think you should just dive into it and kind of do it your way. I had so much fun annotating this whole thing. Like I had so much fun just pausing and like writing down my comments and my thoughts. You know, it, it really enhanced the experience, I think. I ran out of red tabs at the end here, as you can see. And you can also see here, like most of the red tabs are at the front. I think I, in the end, I gave it like a 4.5 or like a five, four star or something. I highly recommend reading Dracula actually as one of your first classics, either Dracula or Frankenstein again. But I think if you're looking for like a more fun adventure kind of story, to like dive into classics, I would definitely recommend Dracula more so than, than Frankenstein, I think. So I finished Dracula and then after that I started reading immediately Maurice by Ian Forster. You can see all my tabs here as well. There aren't as many because it's a shorter book but also because I didn't have as many keys. I only think I have three keys. One of them is Maurice being gay, lovely passage, and the third one is uh, gay despair or internalized homophobia. I think I didn't annotate this one as much like in terms of like comments. I more so just like put a tab whenever yeah one of like these three things occurred. But I gave this one five stars. I think it is just yeah I'll get to it in like a, a separate review video where I review all the books I've read so far but um, really enjoyed it, five stars. Then I read uh, Macbeth by Shakespeare, which I think I saw the um, movie, like the 2015 movie when I was in high school. I think my teacher put it on one day or something. Um, not sure why, because we never read Macbeth, but that was like really all I remember of Macbeth. I didn't, I have never actually read it. So reading it, I was excited to dive into it and kind of like, yeah, I think it's one of his most famous famous works like after Romeo and Juliet but I think it might actually be the most famous because there were a lot of phrases that are just quoted from Macbeth that I hear more often than Romeo and Juliet. Just a ton of like quotes that I, I didn't realize were from Macbeth. And also I read this while I was uh, watching, I think his name is Ian McKellen's performance of Macbeth. It's free on YouTube, but I watched that while I was reading. So I highly recommend actually watching like either like a stage play of Macbeth or like maybe even a movie. But since it is a play, you know, it makes more sense to, to watch like a, a stage play a rendition of, of Macbeth while you're reading it because I wanted to like find an audiobook or something, but then I was like, why don't I just find, you know, an actual performance of it? So, and then I, yeah, coincidentally found Ian McKellen's uh, performance on YouTube. So that was, that was, that was an experience. That was really cool. And now I am reading Othello, uh, also by Shakespeare. This is the Cambridge University Press. So it has like a lot of, um, you can see here, like it has a lot of analysis inside a lot of footnotes um, and stuff like that, a lot of interpretations, which I really like. I think I have like a similar one. I have like the Oxford Press of Anthony and Cleopatra that I also plan on reading. Looks like this. Um, that also has like a lot of footnotes. I'm really surprised to find that I'm enjoying Shakespeare's works. Uh, not sure why I'm surprised as such, because like, you know, I've been in enjoying so many classics, but I think it's just because Shakespeare is like the epitome of classics. And he's, yeah, he's basically like the face front of uh, classic literature. And it just seems so like, you know, unapproachable in some way or a little bit daunting maybe even. 
So to find that it was actually quite easy to, to dive into and to, you know, read and really understand and even like appreciate uh, the way that he structures his stories was a surprise to me, but uh, a welcome one, I think. It was, yeah, serendipitous in a sense. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to finish this. I'm about halfway through. I think that's it for now. Now, let's dive into uh, the topic of this video, which is the worst books that I read in 2023. I know it is very late. Probably by the time this video goes up, it is already May or something. But listen, okay, I, I need to catch up. <laughs> I need to get there. It's been, it's been a semester, okay? It's been a rough time. So let's dive into it, shall we? Uh, the first book I want to talk about is The Oathbound by Mercedes Lackey. This is a fantasy epic story collection in the series Val Valdemar uh, Vows and Honor. This is the first book in that series and it is about these two women who have like a sister pack in the sense that they are basically like life companions. They travel together around the world and their mission is to yeah save women from all kinds of harrowing experiences let's say. The concept sounds so good but then I actually read the book and I realized, oh, okay, um, this woman really, really hates trans people. <laughs> Not just tra trans people, but I also found that her insane, like, use of rape in it, like, throughout the whole story was just too much. Any chance she gets she includes like a rape scene or like a threat of rape or like sexual assault or something like that and it's like okay can we please chill on the rape scenes okay can we please chill and the thing is like i liked the the start of it because it was kind of structured like a series of small stories a series of small adventures like per chapter which I found really interesting. This was released in the 80s, by the way, in like 88. I was really interested in the uh, relationship between the two main characters. And especially one of them, I think, was asexual. So I was interested in that too. Yeah, then we just dive into the book and it's just rape scene after rape scene. And I'm like, okay, actually, you know what? I'm not really vibing with this. There was also like a weird scene in the end where she kind of punished someone by turning them into a woman and then having them be raped by like a band of guys. It was, it was not, it did not hit, okay? It did not pass the vibe check. So, you know, I gave it 2.5 stars, I think. The next book that I read that I just, oh, I hated it with a passion is Honor by 3D Umrigar. This book is awful. Like it is, oh, it is awful. It is, it is an awful book. And listen, I know and I, I support, you know, people having different tastes, people are just having, you know, different likes in books and stuff like that, different uh, preferences, but I genuinely could not. So Honor by 3D Umrigar is a contemporary literary novel, I think, or just like a contemporary novel, uh, which is like about this woman. She's in her 30s. She is moving back to India for some time to help with a story because she's a journalist. So she's helping out with this story that her paper wants to publish. I think the person, like the journalist that she's very good friends with, she's calling in like a favor because she can't do it herself. Like she needs her help. And also because she's Indian herself, the main character, the main character is Indian. So her friend calls her and is like hey can you like finish the story for me i would appreciate it blah 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 and she is dreading she's really dreading going back to india because she hates india like she's from india and i think she left india when she was like 13 or something but she hates going back like she hates it she really really hates it that was already kind of a red flag but whatever you know sometimes people have their reasons to hate uh, their home country. It is things that I have seen in my own community before, you know, people have their own reasons. So I was like, okay, fine, let me keep an open mind. Maybe she has a good reason. And she does have a good reason 
But the thing is that, yeah, okay, so before I get into that, so yeah, so she's going to India to cover this story about this woman who was attacked by uh, members of her village for marrying a man who did not share the same religion as herself. And they saw this, of course, as like uh, blasphemous and there was a lot of like racial undertones as well. So they attacked this woman and that's what um, the main character is supposed to cover. But she has to travel with a translator because apparently she doesn't know how to speak Hindu anymore. Yeah, it doesn't say in the in the blurb which dialect it is, but basically like the dialect that she grew up with, she can't speak it so she needs like a translator. For some reason, even though she left India when she was quite like old, you know, she was or not old, but like she was old enough to remember the language. So it wasn't like you know, she was a kid and would have forgotten it. I don't know. It it just didn't make sense. Like you don't just forget your mother tongue like that. But whatever, she doesn't know how to speak the language, maybe she even refuses to, whatever. So that's why she has to tra travel with this translator who's kind of like a nationalist and doesn't really see anything wrong with the country. And you know, he comes from a, a, a privileged background and they kind of like, yeah, they kind of don't really see eye to eye to begin with, but then they slowly become friends and stuff like that. So it's, it's like a, a commentary on like Indian society today and how certain traditions are still being practiced in like remote areas of the country and stuff like that and how yeah they need to change it or whatever i don't know so the reason i didn't like this book is that well first of all the just the absolute arrogance of the main character like i oh i hated her i hated her from the first like i was so close to DNFing this book, but then I decided to finish it because I wanted to like make a video about it, but I don't think I can do that because first of all, like it's been such a long time since I've read it actually. <laughs> um, but also because I think I will just, I will burst into flames in anger if I have to talk about this book because it is just not good. So the main character, she, I didn't like her at all. I thought she was arrogant. I thought she was selfish and I thought she was very rude and disrespectful as well. Like she, she felt very like, oh, I'm so civilized. I'm so educated because I grew up in America and you know, I fled to America and I have my trauma and you need to listen to me because of my trauma and I know more than you and stuff like that. And it just, ooh, it gave me like the ick you know it gave me like the, like not not so much because she was using her trauma to like get others to listen to her she she has like this very like i know more than you vibe like she kind of yeah she's also condescending especially to like the translator who still lives in in india and who's like kind of a nationalist and comes from a privileged background or whatever and she keeps like expecting like certain things to be handed to her because she's american you know like it's <laughs> it's actually ridiculous because there's like a scene at the end of the book where she somehow manages to to stop a, a violent mob from attacking her by shouting that she's american and that if they lay a hand on her america is gonna bomb the country or some, <laughs> some shit like that like it was so fucking ridiculous and I, I laughed at that point, but I also, ooh, I wanted to cry. The whole book is like riddled with just American propaganda. It is riddled with American propaganda. It is riddled with Western ideals and traditions. It is riddled with, oh, India is so backward. They don't know anything. They're so uneducated. Look, they are still like living in castes in some rural areas and, and stuff like that like look at how uncivilized they are and it's like i just did not vibe with it and you know when i finished the book i was kind of like looking through the reviews and i saw that it had like a huge count like a huge five star count and i realized this is because it was like uh i think reese witherspoon's book club pick or something so of course like a lot of white women are gonna read this and love it because it is just exactly up their alley and i get it you know and that's the thing like if you actually look at all the reviews all the people who gave it five stars are white there is not a single indian i have seen that has given it five stars. Actually, all the the reviews I saw that gave it like one star, two stars, 
they were Indian. Just absolutely terrible. I thought the ending was awful. I hated all of the characters. I hated the morale. I hated the message. I hated everything. I hated everything about it. I, it was physically, it was physically painful for me to get through this book. Like there were so many times where I just wanted to drop it, but I was, I was just hanging on because I knew I wanted to talk about it in one of my videos, but listen, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. I have so many annotations. Yeah, I was just not vibing with it. I gave it one star. Yeah, I do not recommend this book at all. If you are thinking of reading this book um, because it was like a, a Reese Witherspoon book club pick or whatever, do not read it. It is not worth it. It is not good. It is actually, I would say, harmful to the image it is trying to sell of India, actually. So, okay, so then the next book that I uh, want to talk about that I read uh, last year is Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra something. Cassandra Kaw. Uh, this book is a horror book. It has one of the worst ratings <laughs> on Goodreads I've ever seen. It has a 2.67 out of 5 stars on Goodreads and like a book has to be really bad to get an average rating this low. Like because Goodreads girlies, they will eat anything up, okay? They will eat anything. So for so many people to rate it this low, yikes. I didn't even see the, the rating before I read this. I didn't even know. You know, I wasn't in on the scoop. I was just looking around at my library, seeing what was available. And I saw this and I was like, oh, okay, I've heard a lot about it. I didn't know it was bad, okay? <laughs> I didn't know it was bad. Um, but I read it and it was very bad. The problem with this book is that it's not really taking itself seriously. Like it's kind of, it just doesn't feel genuine. It doesn't feel, you know, well-crafted at all. The It hits all of the horror tropes, but with no proper execution with no payoff. It was incredibly short as well. It just felt like one of those like mass produced um, stories that you see a lot of nowadays, but without any of the heart. It just kind of felt a little bit insulting to be honest as a reader to read this because it felt like the author didn't really try that hard and that tells me that you know she doesn't actually care about the craft and she doesn't actually care about this story. All she cared about was just putting something on the page printing it and then selling it like and I'm sorry but I just don't support that mindset I don't support that way of thinking when crafting a story I think I think storytelling is a craft that deserves much more respect than that so I gave it 1.5 stars I did not enjoy it at all a lot of other people have said much more articulate things about it <laughs> than uh, I can all right and then the the last book that I uh, want to talk about is Camp Zero Camp Zero by Michelle Min Sterling uh this also has a pretty low average it has a 3.2 not great and the thing is yeah it wasn't a great book it was not it is not good. <laughs> like this is like a sci-fi uh, dystopian post-apocalyptic kind of story. Like it is about climate change and about the advancement of technology and how we increasingly become more and more dependent on like technology to uh, remember things for us, to gather information for us in the sense that we just turn lazy and we end up not being able to perform any of those processes ourselves and this book is about this woman who is like going up north in Canada uh, she's like a part of this project to uh, build a community there and because it's cold up there and everywhere else it's really really warm and just unlivable temperatures so uh, she and like a group of other people are like building a university in order to start a community there and essentially live there uh, colonize the area, stuff like that. Yeah, so it, like the theme is colonization, but the thing is, it didn't really execute it that well. First of all, the main character is Korean, um, Canadian, even either Korean Canadian or Korean American. I think if you're touching upon like colonization and climate change, and especially in Canada, it just would make more sense if the main character was like an indigenous person. But whatever, like I. I can't fault the book for having a Korean, you know, main character, but I just think that if if that's the message, if that's like the theme you wanted to touch upon, 
it just doesn't make sense to not include any indigenous people and that's the thing like there were no indigenous people in this story another thing was that uh there was this weird subplot with these like group of women scientists who are never named by the way um except for like their profession they essentially become like this vigilante group that kill a bunch of men for some reason and whenever like i would read about those subparts they would always be filled with like gender essentialism and like kind of snubby remarks against men and be like oh, of course men are like the root of all evil and of course ru men ruin everything and stuff like that and it's like okay so i didn't enjoy it at all i didn't enjoy the writing i thought it was trite i would not recommend it it was yeah one of the worst books i i read so yeah these are kind of the only books that i read last year that i really didn't like and that i just would not recommend to anyone because they just either don't know what they're doing or they just are not executing well or they have harmful rhetoric and, and messages that I don't support at all. So um, yeah, those are the books that I wanted to talk about today. Thank you for watching. Um, if you're still here, that is, <laughs> after all, all these months, all these many moons. Let me know what books you read last year that you didn't like. If you've read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts about them. Um, hopefully in a future video I will talk more in depth about all the books that I've been reading. I haven't been reading that much actually this year because I've been so busy. I want to read more but I think also mostly because I'm reading like, you know, physically. I have a lot of books on my uh, actual shelf, on my physical shelf that I want to get through and I just really only have the time to read when I'm either commuting actually when I'm commuting because when I'm at home in the evening I'm making dinner and just yeah recovering from reality so you know the only time I can really read is when I'm on the train to to school or to work or whatever so but yeah so hopefully uh in a future video that's what I'll be touching upon and uh thank you for watching and uh, yeah that's it bye <laughs>